So we did we, we did some price comparisons with Backblaze and Wasabi as well. So once again, 100 terabytes with about 10 TV access a month. Um, and obviously the first thing that jumps out with a Wasabi is, you know, the zero egress cost. But yeah, you got to also understand that, you know, for a 10 TV egress out of Backblaze, you know, ain't too bad either, right? When you kind of do the overall comparisons, you know, these two providers are not too far from one another, right? So one of the interesting things we found out is if you sort of take the total cost of storage at $7,200 and you compare that with a uh, AWS uh, or an Azure uh, coming in about $14,000, uh, the $14,000 really is with egress, right? So if you are doing a apples to apples comparison with a Wasabi and a Backblaze with an AWS or an Azure, uh, which means you're egressing your data out of the data center, you know, these two providers win, right? And they win handsomely, right? We're talking about double the cost uh, compared to an AWS, right? But I think what's important to understand is if you start to repurpose in the cloud, things change, right? So the same $7,200, if you repurpose in the cloud, is roughly $2,400 to $3,600, right? So if you repurpose in the cloud, a Wasabi and a Backblaze ends up being double the price than an AWS or an Azure, right? as long as you repurpose in the cloud. Well, you gotta pay for the, the virtual machine instances that you're gonna spin up. But if you're talking about storage and access, well, these providers are very cost effective if you repurpose in the cloud, right? And if you don't touch your data at all, which is you know right here, well, it's $1,200 a year on AWS and Azure versus about 7,000 on Backblaze and Wasabi, right? So if you're looking for a dump and forget, uh, you know, again, the balance starts to shift back to AWS and Azure. Uh, if, you look, if you're looking at the best balance of cost, egress, access, <clears throat> you know, Backblaze and Wasabi are gonna win again, right? So once again, guys, <clears throat> there's no one clear answer, but all we're trying to highlight is there are a lot of nuances here in terms of how you uh, access your data, what kind of access is being provided by the cloud provider, before you can make a final judgment, right? And, um, and it's especially uh, worth uh, talking a bit more about Wasabi's egress, right? Uh, Wasabi has a great uh, free egress policy, but like all things that are free are actually not. Uh, we did a bit of digging and uh, Chris, you wanna highlight some of the facts uh, with Wasabi's egress policy? Yeah, they have what's called a fair use policy to make it even for everybody. And um, it, so they claim they don't have egress costs, but if you check the fine print, um, if you download egress more content than you store in a single month, you get charged egress fees. And you know, people go, well, how can you do that? But I think you can explain how that happens pretty easily. Yeah, no, exactly. And, and, you know, one of our clients and, you know, maybe Matt, you want to add, add a little bit here. Um, one of our clients, you know, is using Wasabi as a cache, right? So not as a traditional backup and archive, uh, you know, they upload to Wasabi once and then they have multiple users that Fabric is distributing the data to, right? So one upload versus 10 downloads, right? And, uh, you know, this client quickly realized that uh, they were actually breaking Wasabi's egress policy. <clears throat> and uh, Matt, you wanna tell our viewers what the client had to do to actually balance that out, so. Yeah, so basically uh, they were getting those, um, let's call them nice little emails, reminding them that they're kind of going against the terms of service. You know, I think any more than four times what you upload is gonna get you that email from them. So they decided, hey, you know, let's just throw a whole bunch of extra stuff. And they basically have a bunch of credit now in the in the yeah. cloud that they can, you know, download. And for our particular remote shared workspaces, uh, this is kind of like the extra, you know, mile we're going to need here for this. Yep. No, definitely. So again, you know, um, I think what's important is that when you're considering these storage only providers, if you're looking for a simple cloud-based <clears throat> sort of target for your backup and archive, you know, it's it's the other ones to go, um, you know, however, you know, the expert tip here is consider the fine, fine print, right? Uh, you know, yes, the, the egress policy on Wasabi is accurate. It is zero, but it, is, it comes with the fine print. 
<clears throat> make sure you read it. And also we want to reflect the fact that, you know, Backblaze does have an egress uh, uh, cost, but it's not very high, right? Uh, so, you know, with that, um, you know, we also do support both Backblaze and Wasabi as part of DNA Fabric. Uh, we have clients, you know, which Matt will highlight that are using uh, these providers as well. Uh, Matt, you want to give us a bit of uh, insight on how our customers are using uh, these providers with their workflows? Yeah, sure. Um, so, you know, like the hyperscalers we just previously <laughs> discussed, and you know, our clients are using these for that backup, for an archive, for <clears throat> a quick conform or something. Um, as we've also talked about, it's a great cache storage, a temporary location, someplace where we can easily move from, say, one coast to the other, back and forth. Um, you know, we also have a lot of clients that are using this as a migration point. They're either migrating to it or migrating away from it. So we've been able to kind of migrate between different cloud providers. So um, great, as you guys have said, you know, easy to sign up, easy for to use. Um, but it's a good starting point and then maybe leads into something else or we just stay there. So.